Welcome to our usual hovers. I'm Economica, and today we can play for the game Dance of the Damned, where we find ourselves in a dark place, not knowing who or where we are. All that we do know is that there's a strange voice inside our heads. Wake up! Come on, take a look at where you are. Open your eyes, now. I guess I listen to you now. Wait, am I in some kind of coffin? What? What is this? Wh why can't I move? Oh, I'm definitely encased in the wood. Where am I? Wait, no, 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 calm your breathing. If we really are buried alive, the last thing we want to do is waste oxygen. Don't you remember? That's hurtful. Oh, there, that's better, yeah. Take some uh, deep breaths. What? Who's talking? What's going on? You should calm down. There's only one way out of here. But where am I? This, this looks like a coffin. Well, at least you figured out where you are. Now you've got to find your way out. My way out? Uh, hello? Help! Help me! Oh, we are definitely gonna hyperventilate ourselves into passing out again. I can't breathe. I can't pass out right now. I have to figure out how to get out of here. You look around. At one side of the coffin, you see a nail sticking out. Oh. Can we grab them? Maybe we can use them to pry up some boards. I mean, it doesn't seem the most sturdiest of coffins. Oh, we can take them. I don't have any tools to pry it out. I can't use my fingers. Oh, maybe we just need to try and bash out the weak spots then? You keep looking. The side of the wooden wall that the mold stains look worn out almost rotten. You drag your hand there and start pounding. Well, this is our biggest one, so maybe this one is our best chance of getting out of here. I, I've got to hurry. I can barely breathe anymore. You start bashing with all your might in desperation. Your hands start bleeding. Dirt starts pouring in through the holes in the torn wood, but you manage to stick your arms out, pull and... Oh! So maybe we're not buried very deep then. That's rather lucky. Man, we've got this. That was a good sound. Oh! Well, at least we can breathe now, right? Wait, did they think I was dead? Oh, plot twist, they buried me in a pet cemetery. Am I a zombie now? Hello? Hi, I is there anyone there? I, I can't remember anything. That's quite disappointing. But first things first, I think you should start running. But, but I don't know where I am, or where to go. That's the least of your problems right now. Can't you feel it? He is coming. Who is he? He? What should I do? I don't know whether to trust this voice in my head or not. I reckon we should definitely trust it. I mean, that grouse said there was something definitely behind us. But I kind of want to meet him. Let's stay put. I better stay here and don't make much noise. Maybe whoever's coming can help me. I don't think they're here to help me. 
You can't finish that thought before you see a shadowy figure hurling itself against you. Oh! He's a pup! I think I found a hellhound. It all goes black. The sound of an animal biting and tearing your body apart fills the scene. The last thought that goes through your head is that you didn't even get a chance to remember your name. Let's face it, my death was clearly an inevitability there. So it's time to listen to the voice in her head and run to the dark forest. Are we even going to be able to outrun the pup? You go into the woods. It's pretty dark, but the moonlight illuminates a bit in between the tree line, and you're able to keep a steady pace. Well, I can't hear the pup anymore. Your breathing accelerates more and more, and you feel you're lacking air. Oh, I really probably should have worked on my cardio before this. You still can't get over just crawling your way out of a coffin at the very last minute. Your lungs can't seem to hold on to the oxygen coming in. You come up to a fork in the road. The one at your right looks darker. The twisted tree branches get tighter than further it goes. The one at your left looks better illuminated, but you catch a glimpse of movement behind some gnarled tree trunks. Ooh, decisions. I feel like the correct answer is actually going to be the right path. I mean, if we're trying to escape from the pup, surely having a more restricted route would be better for us. But I kind of want to know where the movement was. Which way to go? Well, let's go die again. Head down the path to the left. Without much thought, you head down the path to your left. I do realise though, the problem with heading to the illuminated path is that yes, we can see. But it also means that everyone else can see us too. So we're not going to be able to hide very well. As you move, you can spot strange shadows peeking out from behind some trees. Their eyes are red. Ah, all the past victims of the forest. You pull to a halt. The sound comes from your left. Maybe someone's in danger and they need your help. But are you in any shape to help anyone? You don't even know who you are, what's going on, or where you are. Should I help her? Hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, clearly, I always say, if you go and try and be the hero, inevitably you are going to get murdered. And we don't even know if she's actually a victim of the forest. I mean, this could very easily just be a trap. I'm too curious now, though. We should turn left and look for the woman. You follow the sound of the scream. Perhaps someone's going through the same as you are and could find some answers together. Suddenly, at one side of the road, you see the silhouette of a woman. You hear her cries. Wait, this reminds me of something. She's under the dim light, with a fog surrounding her. Um, excuse me, are you alright? The crying from the woman stops. Who are you? Are you with him? With whom? I'm on the run. There's something that... Someone... Have you seen my girls? Wait! That's what you remind me of! Creepy woman standing in the fog, crying, and also asking for children. Are you Lilla Rona? Oh, I bet you are. I think you even remind me of the case cover, right? Of Curse for Lilla Rona. No, I'm sorry. I haven't seen anyone, I just... Tell her you know where her daughters are. To be fair, I do know where they are. Aren't they at the bottom of a lake? Doesn't she drowns them, right? What? Haven't you learned you do way better when you listen to me? Oh, yeah. I've seen a couple of girls. Where? Tell me. Ask for her flashlight. I'll tell you, if you give me your flashlight. The woman stares at you for a few moments. You can barely make out the shine of her eyes. 
After a while, she nods, pulls out a flashlight from her pocket, and hands it to you. She must go back the way you are coming. She'll find them there. You give the directions the strange voice just gave you, and the woman hurries off. You keep on moving down the path. Suddenly, you hear a bloody scream from the woman that suddenly dies off. What? What just happened to her? Okay, the way I see it, Eva A, she found her girls at the bottom of the lake and now is screaming about their death. Or, wait, we sent her back down the path we came from, right? But did we just send her into the direct path of the pup? Well, I suppose that protects me at least a little bit. You don't want to know. You needed that flashlight. Is... Is she dead? Oh, that's a yes. You take a look at the path once again. Suddenly you hear some growling behind you. You hurry up. Ah. So yeah, we sent her into the direct path of the pup. You keep on moving. The path becomes even darker until you reach a new fork in the road. This time... You can't see down any of the two paths, due to the darkness of the woods. What the hell? You could swear you've already been here, but it's impossible that you've been going around in circles, right? What's going on here? Hmm. You know what, I feel like I'm dedicated to the path on the left, so let's keep going. Now you have a flashlight, so you turn it on and head into the path on the left. You can barely illuminate part of the woods. You can still hear that whatever's after you is still following. Suddenly, you come to another fork, very much alike the previous one. It can't be the same place. This, this can't be real. Nope, you're not fooling me. Keep going to the left. Now you have a flashlight. Oh, maybe it's a bad idea. There seems to be a Pete in the dialogue. Okay, we might have to go to the right. Okay, I've learnt my lesson. Time to head down the path on the right. Oh, wait, it's the same dialogue regardless. Oh, there we go. Suddenly. Your flashlight shines on something that chills you to the bone. Oh. Wait, are those all the shadows? What's this? They're... They're dead. Who? I've got to get out of here. I'm about to lose my mind. Behind you, you can hear a macabre cackle, and even further, the sound of those steps you already know well. You know what? We're gonna push forward. The distant sound of footsteps makes you decide not to take chances and carry on. The flashlight trembles in your hands as you move past the dangling bodies. You feel some of them brush past your shoulders and head, and that makes you sick, but you can't stop. You hear the sound of breaking wood before you feel the floor beneath you giving in, and you fall into a hole. <laughs> oh, that's got to have hurt. I've been a little bit impaled. Maybe I should have gone backwards then. You're barely conscious. A sharp spike pierces through your various parts of your body. It's strange, because you don't feel any pain. <laughs> I think he's amused by our suffering. After a few minutes, you see a blurry shadow peeking down the hole and cackle. Oh! Madman's got a gun! 
The sound of the gunshot stuns you before blowing your head off. I think I'm dead. Okay, before we go back and try and escape our madman, what would happen if we just ignore the woman crying? Because then we would never end up with a flashlight, right? So if we just keep moving. You decide you're in no shape to help anyone, so you keep on the way you are going. Suddenly, you come up to two small silhouettes standing down the road. Weirdly, moonlight seems to shine even brighter from behind them. You hear a childlike voice humming a melody. Uh, hello? Hello? What are you doing here? This place is dangerous. Maybe you guys should go back to the hotel, huh? Of course it is. There's... there's someone with an animal that... We know. Because of him, we are starving. Come with me. We may find... <laughs> the childish laughter echoes in your ears. You can feel something's wrong. Very wrong. Oh. Wait, if the pup and the old man are denying them... food... Maybe that's going to be like the souls that enter the forest. I'm assuming they're going to want to eat me, right? An otherworldly mist invades the scene. We're too hungry. We could... <gasps> ah! Zombie kids! Before you realise, both girls launch themselves over you. You are barely conscious of the bites and gnawing on your body, but you can clearly hear the sound of your flesh dearing with that strange melody still sounding all the way. So clearly meeting the Lerona is our optimal path, right? The one we need to take to proceed. So I wonder how we'd die if we go down the path on the right. It gets darker, and that'll help me to go unnoticed. I think. You make your way down the path on the right. You carry on with the sound of footsteps behind you, but they seem to have proceeded somewhat. You come up to a new fork. This time you can't see a thing down any of the two paths due to the darkness of the closed forest. Oh, all the spirits are around. You could swear you saw several pairs of strange red eyes that blink in the dark. Oh, so I technically survived to the second fork. It's just I'm not going to be able to see anything because I've got no light. Let's try the left path. I can't see a thing. I can't go that way. Wait, we can't go either way then. I should look for another way. Oh, hide behind a tree. Am I gonna get eaten by the shadows? You hide behind one of the trees at the side of the path. After a few minutes, you hear the sound of footsteps approaching. Oh, maybe I did a good thing. I'm guessing if I retraced my steps, I would've got shot, right? You open your eyes. Whoever was chasing you kept on going to the dark path. You take the chance to leave your hiding spot and head back. You arrive to the first fork on the road. I think I just saved my own life. At least temporarily. Let's go down the left then. Okay, so the only option we have is to head back, right? Because if we push forwards, we're just going to fall through the fall and impale. You're not going into that slaughterhouse of dangling bodies. Besides, the steps still sound far enough, you, so you decide to head back. I just realised what all the hanging bodies reminded me of. I can't remember what it's called, but I remember it was just about a tree house in the middle of the forest. And I'm pretty sure one of the promotional was just loads of hanging bodies around it. Once at the prior fork, 
You take the path on the left. You keep on going until you reach a clearing. This is clearly going to be his house, right? Far down the path, you see some sort of cabin with lights on. You can't believe your luck is finally improving. The moon hides behind the clouds, and a distant lightning can be heard. Oh, I'm in bad shape. I'm also looking a little bit green. Maybe I am a zombie. You raise your arm to shield your head, and notice your whole arm is quite mangled. You probably hurt yourself this bad, pushing your way out of the coffin. Nah, I'm telling you, man. We were buried in the pet cemetery. You're outside of the cabin. What do you do? Oh! What if you're going to give me the option for going to the basement? We all know I have to do it. Oh, everyone knows I am a master sneakster, so we can definitely do this. It's locked with a paddle chain. But with a closer look, you realize the padlock is rusted and broken. You pry it open and head into the darkness. The room is dark. You can barely make out a set of stairs that head up to the upper floor, thanks to a beam of moonlight that shines through the threshold you just crossed. Ah, <sighs> we have one single sultry bulb. You try turning on your flashlight that flickers a few times and dies off. Damn it! Oh, look where you ended up at. Are you sure you want to go up there? What do you do? Do you head up towards the music, leaving the darkness of the basement behind? Or do you go back outside? Hmm. I need to know. My curiosity is too deep. Let's go upstairs. You've come this far. Now you want to know what or who is in this cabin. Maybe it's even someone who can be of any help. Carefully, you walk through the dark basement up the stairs. You start climbing. The wooden steps creak beneath you. Also, if it was someone that was going to help us, I don't feel like you'll be much obliged to do so, since we just broke in through his basement. Oh. I'm not very good at being sneaky. You reach a wide room dressed with a couple of wooden furnishes. A radio is idly playing the music you heard before. Despite a few lights on, you find the ambient to be oppressive. I want to go check out the mirror. I want to see our reflection. You hear a rabid dog barking and bashing against the door with rage. Whoever had been following you has arrived to the doorstep. What a twist! Shut up already! <laughs> you wouldn't have made it this far without me. You look around frantically, while the pounding on the door becomes louder. You see a door at one side and hurry to it. You enter a dimly lit room, where you can only see a rickety bed and a small and old mirror framed on the wall opposite to you. Oh, come on! Approach it! You must look at yourself, and maybe that'll jumpstart your memory, right? Oh, do it! Definitely do it! You're suddenly terrified. An unspeakable horror takes over you. With agonizing pace, you reach the mirror. It's still somewhat dark, but you can stand in front of it and gaze upon your reflection. Come on, show ourselves! What? What is this? Ah, how do you look? But why? This... It's impossible! Oh, I really am a zombie! Now you're starting to remember. You're assaulted by flashbacks of a past life, of a family, the joy of a home, and then the horror of when the thing that now speaks in your head found you at the forest and turned you into what you are now. That woman, the woman in the woods, she was my... Oh yes, she suffered your passing, but the girls took it the hardest. No, no, no! 
I don't want to know. I won't. The girls. Oh, they were my children. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Little Rona, for accusing you of killing our kids. Oh, yes. They were so excited when they saw you come back that they didn't even realize it wasn't really you. No, God, no! There is no God here. Your wife could barely put you underground before you could do the same thing to her. But it was way too late for the girls. Did I eat my children? Bad zombie father. Is this my house? You stumble back into the main room. The door creaks, the wood starts splitting open, and you can see a man on the other side, with a shotgun, an enormous dog trying to get in. Run! No, what's the point? I'm already dead. If he catches you, you won't be able to rise from your grave again. Run! No, nothing matters anymore. Run, dumb you! You stand still. You've lost it all. You are a monster and have torn your family apart. You've turned your daughters into what you are. You don't want this sort of existence. The door creaks one last time and you barely hear the gunshot that hits you straight on your head. I feel like that's a small mercy. You fall down. Your sight goes red while you listen to the background music fading out along with your conscience. The voice in your head screams and laughs, but nothing matters anymore. You're finally free. Oh, there I go. Wait, didn't you shoot me in my head? Maybe you just shot me in my neck and blast my head off. Gnarly. Oh, that's our true ending. Then again, this does mean that I've just left my children zombified in the woods. Oh, and they're starving as well. I am curious though, what caused us to gain some of our humanity back? Since when we were first turned, we were so out of it we just murdered our children. Or turned our children. If you enjoyed that playthrough, I'd greatly appreciate you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. But if not, you're spooked and I'll catch you next time, guys.